Dedication and giving to God. I thought that we'll look at something else until the Holy Ghost drew my attention to this message as something that must be shared before this month is over. Our objective is to examine the connection between dedication to God and giving to God. All true scriptures, it is clear that there is a strong connection between dedication to God and giving to God. Dedication to God establishes generosity towards God. Dedicated people are effortless givers. Dedicated people are sacrificial givers. Example number one, Abraham. Abraham's dedication to God was confirmed by his sacrificial giving. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 10, all the way to verse 12. When Abraham was asked to offer his son Isaac, Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. I know you respect me. I know you are committed to me. By this singular act of releasing your son. Example number two, David. David's dedication to God led him to a very crazy dimension of giving. Very crazy dimension. Genesis chapter 31, sorry, Psalm 132 from verse 1 all the way to verse 5. He said, Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore unto the Lord and vowed Unto the mighty God of Jacob, when he says, Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. I won't find sleep for myself until I find a house for the one I love. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verse 3, the Bible said, David speaking said, Because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good of gold, silver, which I have given. Because of my affection for the house of God, I have given of my proper good of gold, of silver, which I have sworn to the house of the Lord. Dedication to God. Our third example will be the example of Solomon. Solomon's dedication to God led him to sacrifice lavishly and extravagantly. Lavishly. In 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 3 and 4, and Solomon loved the Lord. And then walking in the statues of his father David, he sacrificed and burnt incense in high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. Ay, 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 ay. When people are dedicated to God, you don't coerce them. You don't force them. You don't cajole them. You don't beg them. 
question is why does dedication lead to giving two answers number one dedication is donation a man dedicated to God is a man who has who is donated to God to be dedicated to God is to be donated to God when your life is dedicated to God it means your life has been donated to God is God speaking to someone here second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 1 to 5 Concerning brethren, we do with you to wit the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality. These people were given, they were liberal in poverty. He said, for to their record, I bear record, yeah, and beyond their power, they were willing to give of themselves. Praying us, begging us that we should receive the gift and to take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Are you understanding what is happening? These people were givers and we are begging for people to receive what they were given. Then Paul was explaining, he said, and this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. They gave their own selves to the Lord. When a man has given himself to God, there is nothing that is too big for him to give to God. Nothing. Nothing. And I speak out of personal experience. That, was, that is why in Proverbs 23, 26, what God is asking us to give the most is our heart. He said, my son, give me your heart. Give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Give me your heart. I'm not looking for your money yet. Give me your heart. Dedicated people, they tell God, and I have done that many times, Lord, anything I can't give you, don't give me. There are things God has given me that I am not talking of what is a tithe out of it, what is a prophet, I don't know. Anything, 100%. See, people struggle with tithing. There are people brutally dedicated who are not talking of tithe. Am I communicating? Dedication is donation. You own me, you own my life, you own my time, you own my breath, you own my energy, you own my resources, you own my everything. Dedication is donation. Number two, dedication is affection. Dedicated people are love of God. As the heart pants after the water brooks, my heart pants for you. Psalm 42 verse 1 to 2. They are lovers. Dedication is affection. And lovers are givers. Lovers are givers. They are givers. First Chronicles chapter 29 we already read it verse 3 to 5 because I love the house of my God I am going to give of my proper good first Kings chapter 3 verse 3 Solomon loved the Lord we read it already so he gave a thousand bond offerings lovers are givers am I communicating In Matthew chapter 6 verse 21 he said where your treasure is that is where your heart is 
your treasure travels in the direction of your affection your possession travels where your affection is your hand gives where your heart is am i communicating that is why those who love secret they give we're coming we're coming today we travel to see our father in the lord papa yede for the year because as you receive the blessing for the year i receive blessing for the year as well and what i have received i release upon you and as the plane landed like you know say well um this uh, plane is a non-smoking plane and smoking is still not allowed until you land and until you go to smoking designated areas in the airport or whatever so I, I told my wife I said why should they have to announce whether smoking is still not allowed is somebody under pressure to smoke <laughs> oh he said yes don't you know that that uh, they are in a hurry if you come to some foreign airports just see them running quickly to go and look for where to smoke that one hour flight was too long not to smoke their heart is with taba cigar so their money goes there that woman there all the people who patronize her their hearts with dry gin so their money goes there and their lives are tied the man can buy alcohol for strangers how many of you know that but his wife and children are starving at home manager service more so you you are sitting you don't have anything to drink please serve him there there is a compassion they have for each other <laughs> you understand what i'm saying compassion mortal compassion that the man has been seated here for one hour he hasn't tasted any wine why should he be like that please serve him there put it on my bill their heart is with alcohol their money goes there am i communicating there are people whose heart is with strange woman his money perish there <laughs> he will build a man, woman a duplex latest mother car his wife asks for food give her a dirty slab anywhere your heart is that is where your money travels if your heart is with God your money travels there irrespective of what anybody say I was talking with a man the other day he's asking for his son for prayer the boy is into gambling something bet he has sold his father's car is he sold a house he has wasted five point something million he's looking for more money to bet When your heart wherever your heart is there is where your resources will travel and don't let anybody tell you that we give to God because we are brainwashed was well, the alcoholic man brainwashed I have not needed any salmon to pay tight For 33 years since the year of 86 that is I wasn't planning to be a pastor I wasn't planning to preach on Titan I only saw it in scripture and I only saw that it worked my 
my wife doesn't need to advise me it is the first check to be signed every month before any other check is signed somebody say amen this is the connection and as i'm going to be rounding off what is the impact of dedication driven giving before i go to the impact of dedication driven giving i want you to understand that i did not say the impact of giving i'm talking about the impact of the kind of giving that was driven by dedication because there are different reasons for giving let me give you three of them I'm speaking about dedication driven giving because there are other kinds and motives of giving the first kind you would like to know about is what i call trade driven giving trade 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 the kind of giving a person does as if he is doing business the kind of giving that is more like trading with god or more like a gam more like gambling they say if we give we will get so let me try that is trade driven when god say prove me he's not saying trade with me it's trade driven giving it's nothing much it's more like somebody trying to do gambling and business with god the other is religion driven giving religion driven that is where it is, it is normal to give because we are in church it's normal to give i mean it's a, our religion say we should give so i'm giving that is nothing is attached it is just no, nothing is nothing attached in the village for example you know that many elders pay tight no revelation behind it nothing it's just a religion one out of ten is they say we should give one out of ten no revelation nothing attached no dedication the third one is ego ego driven giving the kind of giving a person does to brag to boast bible said even if i give my body to be burned so that people can know and i have not charity probably not the ego driven pride driven selfish ambition driven like the spending and the giving of a politician who does not really love the people want to prove a point like the giving of somebody who want to let people know we are the major sponsors of that church i was able to give so and so everybody is giving why should i be sitting provided nothing nothing the final one which we are dealing with today is dedication driven giving where a person is giving because of donation to god a life completely donated to god a life that say lord you own me and you own everything i have so what am i this is a kind of giving that is driven by affection lord i am not doing business with you i am not trading with you i am in love with you and i'm glad to spend and be spent when i do things for my wife or for my children i'm not doing it because i'm expecting anything back madam take 
So as you take this money, what will you do? Nothing like that. When you come to that point with God, we are, I know you are faithful. I know if I give, I will receive. But even if I didn't receive anything, no challenge. I'm not trading with you. Did I tell you some time ago, a young man came to me and he told, he told me, I have been paying tight. I have been giving tight. He said, Pastor, I have not seen any result out of the tight. He was very angry. You will not believe what I, I did with him. I said, do you remember the tight you have paid? Can you tell me how much? He said, yes, if I think I can calculate. Oh, yeah. He went and calculated and brought the amount. I paid it to him myself. I didn't say, oh, I paid it to him myself. I said, you say you have been paying tight and you didn't see result. Take your money back. And he took it. <laughs> he has not recovered from the calamity. He returned back later. I am so sorry. I think it was my the other PA who is pastoring now that brought him. I am so sorry. I don't know what came upon me. He says, since that time, my life is upside down. I told him, I said, I don't have anything to do. That is a kind of brutal dedication that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us. And he will. But even if he does not, we shall not bow to you, Nebuchadnezzar. We shall not bow. When you come to that point where you let the devil know, I am expecting God to do things for me. But even if he doesn't do what I expect, when I expect, Satan, you are not an option. Devil, you are not an option. Native doctor, you are not an option. Witches and wizard, you are not an option. Cult, you are not an option. I am not changing my mind and my followership of God. Shout, yes! Come to that point when you let God know, I am yours. That is why I do everything I do. I am donated, I am committed, I am surrendered. But God is too faithful to make you to be dedicated for nothing. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 said, Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently say you can't seek him in vain you can't seek him for nothing god is not a waster of people he's not a user of people he's a raiser of people somebody shout amen in isaiah chapter 48 and in verse 17 he said, Thus say the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. I am teaching you to profit. I am not, I am not connecting you to losses. So what is the impact of dedication driven giving? Number one, First Kings chapter three, verse five. All right, in verse four, Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings upon the altar. And in verse five, in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, "Ask what I shall give thee." God appeared. Number one is the provocation of divine visitation. Everyone who is a dedication driven giver is qualified for divine visitation. You provoke divine visitation in 
your life God appears in your in the work of your hands God appears in your business God appears in your family God appears in your academic pursuit God appears and God appeared God cannot appear and your misery does not disappear God appeared am I communicating at all God appeared is heavier than just divine presence he visited you and it can be from visitation to habitation God appeared and God appeared between now and this time tomorrow there is someone that will see the appearance of God if you are that one you say louder amen, amen. if you are that one you see the loudest amen, amen. lift the right and say oh Lord appear in my life change my story what made Solomon Solomon was that appearance if God did not appear to Solomon you would not hear about Solomon I prophesy to you the appearance of God in your life in this season is going to change your story it's going to change your destiny shout the loudest amen A major mark of the life of Samuel was the appearance of God. First Samuel 3.21 And the Lord appeared unto Samuel. The Lord appeared again in Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The appearance of God is what leads to excellence in life. Is God speaking to someone here? Take your seat. So, when you are a dedication driven giver, you are qualified for divine visitation. People will see God around you. They see God with what you do. They see God in your family. They see God in your home. They see God in the work of your hands. They see you, they just see God. It is the provocation of divine visitation. Number two is connection. To divine generosity. Ask what you want. That is. I connect you to ocean that cannot dry. Connection to divine generosity. Your dedication driven giving connects you to resources beyond the scope of human experience. Extra natural supplies. I wish somebody would shout it louder. I wish somebody would shout it louder. Take your seat. Look at your neighbor. Say that there is the possibility of connection to divine generosity. How much do you think God has in his account? And God gives you a check, he signs, and he says, write the amount, and write your name. <laughs> this is real. From this moment forward, everything you do with God, do it with a Passion, a com a, an affection and a donation. Don't do 
it with a business or a trade in mind and see how God will link you. He will link you. Solomon did not arrive with a request. Even when God asked him to ask for something, he, he didn't ask for anything financial or any physical thing. To such a point with God. The things I am doing with you, Lord, is not because of what I want to, you to do back for me. It's because of who you are and what you mean to me. Then he will connect you to his obadabadaness. Somebody say amen. Omnipotence, he will connect you to his omnipotence omniscience, omnipresence, omni everything. Is somebody getting anything here tonight? Let me decree again that after this night, your God, my God, will connect you to his limitless supply, to his inexhaustible supply. Shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Take your seat one minute. I have two more points and then we'll round off. What is the impact of dedication driven giving? Number three is the realization of non financial benefits. Non financial. And when I say non financial, I am talking about you giving to God and realizing from God what money can't buy. God told Solomon, I'm sure you, you, you have read that before, because, and, and he asked Solomon, what do you want? And Solomon said, give me wisdom, give me understanding. And God says, since you have not asked for money or for this or that, I'll give you the wisdom, I'll give you long life, I'll give you honor, I'll give you greatness, until there is no king like you ever, before or after. God takes you to a point where you realize what money cannot buy. Some of us are at a realm by God's mercy that political power can place you in all humility. Hello? We landed at the airport just now. Everybody wanted a handshake. Every, you were there. Everybody wanted a handshake. Everybody wanted greeting. Just say what? Just everybody wanted until I had to stop. And as I stopped, they, they ran a mass. I preached a brief sermon to them and then led them to Christ a mass and then laid hands on them. When was the last time a, polit a political person arrived in a place and everybody said, and they ran and said, bless me or something. There are those people who are praying for them to die. <laughs> Every, there are people, those that people are wondering what is this guy still doing here? There are those who were in power before who will be passing now and they will be winking their nose at him. See thief they go. But then they thief all our money. Don't misunderstand me. There are very genuine quality leaders. The reason why you have bad five Nara notes is because there are good ones. Am I communicating? And very soon God will be raising many, many more who will be quality generational leaders, incorruptible generational leaders. 
and I can tell you there is a favor there is a an acceptability there is a dignity there is an authority there is an energy there is a health there is a vitality there is something God can give you that money cannot give you billions cannot give you millions cannot give you power political power cannot give you only God take your seat if I were you I will go for what only God can give that man cannot give somebody say amen somebody say amen somebody say a louder amen lift up your right and say father I dedicate myself to you and I connect my life I connect myself to non-material benefits I I access what money cannot buy. Shout the loudest, amen. amen. Is God speaking to anybody at all? In the next 10 years, if Jesus tarries, we'll still be bouncing like this. 10 years plus on top of that, if Jesus tarries to come, we'll still be bouncing like that money can bite can bite somebody say amen that was what God did for Solomon by his dedication driven giving some of us need some levels of favor in one area or the other you need influence you need authority you need to speak for witchcraft power to hear you you need you need you need some opening somewhere and money can buy it dedication driven given and finally I call it the exceeding of life's expectation what is the impact of dedication driven giving God bringing you to a point where you have practically exceeded your life's expectations God took you to a point beyond what you imagined of your life. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You know Solomon? Do you remember Solomon? The child of relationship illegal relationship between Solomon between David and Uriah the Hittite's wife Beersheba that kind of a child was not even qualified for any inheritance that was why he came to God he told him, I am nothing I am nothing Lord I, who am I I don't even know how to go out or come in God took that boy far beyond his expectation. I can imagine how he grew up and how everybody was taunting him. Look at you. Go and look for your father. This one is not your father. Your real father, they kill him in, in war. All manner. But he grew up, exceeded his life's expectation. Where you are now is shadow compared where God wants to take you you know there are times when you come to the point where your life is a surprise to people but there's a higher realm where it is a surprise to yourself is there anybody step into that realm stand on your feet in the louder shout of amen a louder shout of amen the louder shout of amen stand up on your feet it's a surprise to yourself I knew that God would do great things in my life that is you talking but I didn't know it would be as great as this I knew that God is taking me somewhere but I didn't know that it would be up to this where 
And God says, I have not started yet. He will exceed your expectation. That is what the Bible said. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can think or imagine. Shout Amen. Be upstanding. When we started ministry, I knew that God will help us. And I knew that churches would be built. But I didn't know that anything like this would be. When we started, I didn't know. It didn't cross the highest imagination. I didn't know. Eh? Because I didn't see it anywhere before. It was along the line that we saw our Papa in the Lord. Came up with something very massive. Before I ever saw that, I was already in ministry. I didn't know that such possibilities existed. And he said, we are just starting. There were people who looked down on us. Plenty. Who is it? Which one is this small boy? And enough, it's only in Africa that somebody is 28 years. They are still calling him small boy. In, in, in Britain, at the age of 18, you are a man. 20. If you are not careful, you have to start contributing money. Small boys, small boys. At the time, some people say it's only strugglers that are in our church. People, only people who, people don't, who don't, people who don't have anything. That's what some people were insinuating at the time. That is you and me who are nothing. See where God brought nothing to. And this nothing is still heading somewhere. If you mind people, you lose your destiny. Just face God. Face God. Face God with passion. Face God with affection. Face God with dedication. Face God with devotion. I know God sent me for somebody here tonight. I still have one verse of scripture that he wants me to share with you. But for now, lift your hands and give him the praise.